Hi everyone, Operator Starsky here. Uh, today I have some special guests uh, on my channel. <laughs> I know this man for a lot, a lot of years. Uh, we've been together um, as NCOs in my brigade. I know him probably since 2016, when my second operative company was formed. He is a Russian-speaking, Azerbaijani, Ukrainian national guardian. Yeah, and uh, Voodoo returned from Rubizhna, where he was wounded by a Russian tank. And uh, today I'm gonna ask him a couple of questions. Значит, uh, a traditional question for you. How many shell shocks do you have? I think it was the fourth one, but it was tough, the previous were kind of mild. So, four shell shocks, I think it's a lucky number for our brigade. Uh, what do you remember about Rubizhne? What were your biggest impressions? Silly orcs. <laughs> they are so silly. On average, one hour man had to face approximately nine enemies. It was kind of tough, tactically. Psychologically, it wasn't hard, because we were protecting our home and we were doing our job. So we can say that there were nine battalion tactical groups against our group. Yes. According to unofficial sources, there could be much more. What we have learned there was that we had to face the Spetsnaz of Russia, Spetsnaz of so-called LPR, and Kadyrovites. What were your guys doing there? Improving orcs. What was your task? It was defending specific areas of Rubizhne, and this task was accomplished successfully. We couldn't remain in the same position, so we had to move back slowly, causing significant casualties to our enemies, which was accomplished successfully. For example, currently, in order to perform a successful advance, we require uh, heavy weapons that we don't have enough at this point. That's why, in my opinion, the task of moving back and causing uh, casualties to our enemies was performed perfectly. What do you remember about your injury? Not much. I walked and I woke up in the hospital. The tank shot at us using the hinged trajectory. The enemy does that a lot and our tank crews know how to do it as well. So what happened after that? After that there was an evacuation to the Lysychansk, where I woke up because of a horrible pain, because they tried to install a catheter without a lubricant. <laughs> Welcome to the world of grown-ups. And then I was losing consciousness. I don't remember everything clearly, because I was losing consciousness. But the painkillers felt good. But jokes aside, the evacuation was really hard, because I was constantly passing out. How much time did the treatment and rehabilitation take? Approximately three months, but I still have to finish it. And my musculoskeletal system is still a bit damaged. It's just, when you are under a heavy stress, you lose appetite, and when you stop eating, you don't have enough strength. So, for example, instead of the full ammo box, you can only bring half of it. So, I had to force myself to eat over and over again. So, what's your plans? My plans is to continue. We haven't finished the job yet. What would you like to say to our viewers, to those 324,000 decent people and supporters from all around the world? Uh, guys, 
I want everybody to understand that in Ukraine we are fighting in the first line of defense of not only Ukraine, but I think it's we're protecting the whole civilized world. When they came here they were shocked, like, how could you live so well? That's why they started destroying everything. Here we are the first frontier of the civilization protecting the rest of the world in the first line. That's why we require your support. I'm talking not only about HIMARS systems, but also other kinds of heavy weapons, so we could withstand and return our lands back. And if we fail here, this plague will spread further towards the Europe. Well, thank you so much for the interview. So this was my best buddy in the brigade. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, hopefully we will uh, make another video after our victory.